thank you all for joining today for this memorial service in honor of Fuad Shanib. We are here to pay our respects and to share our memories of Fuad, who was tragically and unexpectedly taken from us on 2nd of May, 2020, at the young age of 30 years old. To his family, I pass my deepest condolences. I cannot imagine the pain you must feel right now. I am sure you are proud of the man you have raised, and I hope that this memorial brings you some comfort in the lasting memory he has brought upon us all. Today, we are joined by his friends and family from across the world. Thank you to joining us, to his friends from California, to his friends and professors from school, from his undergrad at Berkeley, from his masters at Cambridge, and from his PhD at Stanford. Thank you to his friends and colleagues in Malaysia, in Singapore, and to his friends and family across the whole globe. Fuad was one of the most loved people I knew, and it is a testament to him that so many people have joined us today internationally to say goodbye. Fuad, or Fufu as I like to call him, was truly a brilliant man. I met him over seven years ago when we were at the University of Cambridge together. In my early 20s, I did not appreciate the size of his heart. As I have matured, and as I have had a chance to reflect on many, many fond memories, I am simply overwhelmed by the values he held. My friend Fuad was the most humble, genuine, selfless person I have had the pleasure of knowing. My most cherished memory of Fuad perfectly summarizes his approach to not only his friends and family, but also to complete strangers. Soon after our graduation, in 2014, Fuad reached out to me with an incredibly heartwarming message. He told me that he had written a LinkedIn recommendation for me based on my work as the class student representative and more generally as a friend to him. I was humbled by this gesture and told him I would reciprocate. Graciously, Fuad declined my offer and told me to instead write somebody else a recommendation as that would make them happy like he has made me happy. And in turn, that would make him a much happier person. For a person at such a young age to show such selfless maturity is truly astonishing. Fuad, the lessons you have taught me will live within me forever. Not all of the memories of Fuad were as profound as this. Numerous occasions occurred where Fuad and I would message each other the following day after a night out, asking with sheer hope what events we could recall from the night before. When neither of us could remember, we would resort to clues. Fuad would often find a bowl of tomatoes next to his bed, surrounded by an army of his hot sauce bottles. This provided zero clues. My clues were more helpful and usually text back and forth as evidence of our shenanigans. I laugh at the night, when we both tried to get our, lunk, our luck and get free drinks all night in a club with the bartender. I pretended to call the owner of the club who I apparently had on speed dial, whilst Fuad pretended to be the owner of the club on the other end of the phone, yet stood right next to me. I am not sure why we believe this worked, would work, but Fuad was extremely pleased when he remembered that he managed to charm his way into getting free entry to the cloakroom. Today is our time to share these memories and throughout the next hour or so, we will hear from some of his friends and family. Before we commence the formal speeches, may I please request a few moments of silence to pay our respects to dear Fuad. Thank you very much. A few house rules, if I may, about the virtual service today. 
Many of us will have been working from home these past few weeks and know the struggles of Zoom calls, especially with so many people on the same call. As such, we please ask you to remain muted throughout the duration of service in respect to those who are speaking. We have 10 speakers today who will each share their memories and eulogies in turn. This memorial service is being recorded and the link will be made available on the Fuwa Shini website in the next few days. To the speakers for today, I will introduce you before your slot. We hope to conclude all formal eulogies within the next hour. After this time, I ask you please to remain on the call as I will read messages from several people who have asked to share. Once all the formal eulogies are complete and the written messages are read, there will be time for us to talk freely with one another. At this time, I please ask everyone to be respectful to others on the call. It is not always possible on video calls to have fluid conversations. I would like to thank you all once again and invite our first speaker, Nick Carter. All right, can you hear me? We can hear you, Nick. Hello. Um, so my name is Nick Carter, for those of you I haven't met. Um, I've been best friends with Fui since sixth grade. Um, we met <clears throat> in middle school when we both started at a uh, school near his mom's house. And um, he was the exact same back then as, he, as the guy that you met. He uh, had that same smile that made everyone brighten up and uh, real goofy, loved to dance, all the cool clothes, <laughs> always up to speed with the random things that were cool. But, you know, I, I know a lot of you met Fui later in life as a extremely educated guy and um, and I know that that is much of his legacy, but I do want to definitely point out that he was just as awesome before you met him. He, uh, he lost 100 pounds after high school, 100 pounds. Uh, he ended up running marathons and climbing every friggin' mountain in the world. <clears throat> he, uh, He's a real inspiration to all of us, you know, for all of us in California that have known him, he's that guy that we brag about and, and we talk about him a lot. And uh, he was doing a lot of things that were becoming so hard to brag about because we weren't even smart enough to understand him. But um, we loved so much about him. I want to try to be positive as the first person going in this big effort and uh, thank you so much to people who are up in the middle of the night, things like that. Um, I'm making a goal for myself to be more like Fui, uh, a little bit at a time because he was a hell of a guy. Um, but I think it's cool to think about just so many areas of a good life that he blew it away, you know? Like, it's, it's already been mentioned, he was so humble and so nice he was who i called whenever i did something stupid and needed someone to make me feel better about it um when i did something wrong and i needed to figure out how to go and approach that person and, and be be like fooey and be kind and um so i've made a list of things that i'm going to start putting into my annual goals to try to Remember him and be more like him, honestly, because that's, that's all I want. And some of those things are uh, losing weight, cooking, which a lot of you probably experienced that. Uh, travel. Everyone knows he's traveled a lot more countries than we can count on our hands and feet. Uh, languages, even learning new languages, challenging ones, not just... Uh, your Cali Spanish, kitchen Spanish, you know. Um, education, obviously, he never stopped. He was about to change the world. His research probably still will change the world, things that he started. 
running, he, I run every day and I can't run half of a marathon and I don't know how he did it, but climbing mountains, being humble, being kind, having a strong relationship. He traveled the world with his mother. He talked to her every day. I was raised by my mom and I'm super jealous of what they have. And, um, and my favorite one about him, which none of you probably know, but dancing, he was a really good dancer. Really enjoyed dancing. <laughs> um, anyways, that's probably my five minutes. He loved all of us so much. He would not want us to cry or be negative about it. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, next, we're going to hear from, from Fuwa's mom. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I, I hope I can now uh, keep it. Um, thank you. Thank you, Raja. Thank you, Hamza. Mute you. Turn it all the way down. I'm sorry, we're having some feedback here. No? Did you? Okay. Um, thank you, Raja. Thank you, Hamza, for uh, organizing this. Um, thank you everyone for uh, joining and celebrating my son. He was the light of my life. Those of you who knew him well knew that we talked every day, sometimes several times a day. Um, when he uh, was at Berkeley, of course, he lived with me. I, um, I pretty much only saw him at mealtime, two, three times a day, mostly. Sometimes on weekends, I would see him more. And we had uh, such long conversations about so many different things in life. Um, our philosophical conversations went on and on to the point that sometimes Terry just <laughs> would get tired, just would leave the room, would leave the kitchen. Um, when he was at Cambridge, we Skyped every night. Um, his friends knew that at a certain time that he would go to his room, um, and say, I, I have a Skype with my mom. And we would talk for at least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. I knew everything about his life. Um, I'm sure there were some things I didn't know, um, which is fine. But I knew so much what he was doing, his ideas, his joys, his sorrows. I knew him very well. And he was perhaps the best person I've ever met in my life. He, uh, he was very intense, as you all know. He lived life with passion and intensity. Everything he did was very intense. If he he loved hot sauce. He smothered his food in hot sauce. If he traveled, he traveled with intensity. He would just push further and harder. You know, if he found a hostel for $10, that was not good enough. He would have to find one for $7. So his money can go, could go farther and he could do more in that travel. 
When he loved, he loved with intensity. I saw him giving love with such intensity. And he for sure gave me love with intensity. He told me, as I'm sure he told many people, that he told me and he showed me that he loved me, if not every day, every few days. He lived in 30 years more than two lifetimes. He did things that people don't do. And I'm not just talking about his academic accomplishments. He did so much that even I forget. And as I was reading his Facebook messages, I would remember things that he did, places he went, people he met. And he kept up with all those people. He, he met, uh, I read a message from, I believe it's Clara, I'm sorry if I, I'm not saying your name right, in Peru for one week. And he kept up with this girl that he spoke very highly of. He, they kept in touch. He would just meet someone for a few days and he would keep in touch with them. I've never seen anyone who, who would do that. Um, he was a loving soul and uh, he loved so many people. And he touched so many lives, but I wanna say that all of you who are here today touched his life too. And I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for showing him kindness, showing him love, showing him a good time, being his friend, his mentor, You're all wonderful people too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jen Park is going to say a few words now. Hi, my name is Jen, and I'm a PhD student at Stanford. And like a few of us here today, I got to know Fouad through the PhD program where he was a memorable colleague and also an important member of the Stanford community. I'm really glad to have this opportunity to share just a few of my memories of Fouad with you. I've known Fawad since March of 2017 when, when he first got accepted to the program. And my first memory of Fawad is through my email with him, congratulating his, his offer and convincing him, really trying hard to convince him to come to Stanford. And he wrote back, thank you so much it was definitely one of the best moments of my life to get that acceptance call from Stanford. I'm pretty much 100% set on Stanford right now. It's close to my mom who lives in San Francisco. And my old advisor told me that it's the best program in the world right now for judgment and decision making. And from this email, even though I haven't met yet met Fouad, it was very clear to me that there were two things he treasured the most in the world his mom and research and judgment and decision making. A few months later, I finally met Fouad on campus when he officially joined our program. 
And every year the new students write and share this brief bio of themselves as a way to introduce themselves to the older students. And after writing about his research interest, um, Fuad wrote, some of my hobbies include traveling, running, eating all sorts of new foods, and doing work in as many cafes as possible. And boy, was he working hard. I would receive emails from Fuad at midnight, sometimes even later than that. He was always not hesitant to ask other students on how to do better, faster, or more efficient research. I mean, all of the PhD students, including myself, we choose this path because we love what we're doing. But Fuad really worked on what he loved. He, re he worked really hard every day. And he was always passionate about uh, research. And in my conversation with him, Fuad was so eager to come up with new ideas, his eyes beaming with curiosity. He wanted to help people make better decisions in life. And soon after joining Stanford, he had many research projects in this direction. For example, he and his advisors discovered this important finding that People can predict the intended effects of nudges, but cannot predict their side effects. And this paper was accepted to the Society of Consumer Psychology Conference, which is one of the most prestigious conferences in our field, where Fawad presented this past March in front of many scholars all over the world. And to say that the professors at Stanford were proud of his achievement would be an understatement. In addition to his devotion to work, Fawad always found a way to be kind to the people around him. He tried to get to know us, not just as classmates, but as friends. He would ask me about my life before coming to Stanford, and we would connect through our love of spicy Korean food. He would know the proper way to pronounce someone's name, which shows respect and inclusion, and a willingness to treat everyone how you would like to be treated. Fuad and I both worked with the same advisor, whose name is Itamar, and I've been calling Itamar, Itamar well before Fuad had joined the program. One day, Fuad told me that the correct way, or the non-American way to pronounce his name is Itamar. And that was just the kind of person Fuad was, making an effort to respect what is the most personal thing about someone. Many of us at Stanford are still in disbelief. And to me, this all feels like a bad dream. So I don't know when or if I'll ever accept that um, Fuad can't come to class anymore, or that um, like I won't be having any walks with him. But Fuad, um, who was an inspiring scholar, a colleague, and a friend, will be missed by many. But he'll never be forgotten by those who were fortunate enough to have known him. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. Next we have Visha, who will say a few words. Hi everyone, um, my name is Visha and I met Fwad um, over six years ago when we were studying in the same program at Cambridge. I'd, um, I'd love to think the beginning of our friendship was exploring the city and this new country, but really it was us and several others on this call trying to claw our way into management consulting jobs. Fouad organized some case practice sessions and that's how I first really got to know Fouad. Um, thankfully though, our friendship was far from confined to interview prep. 
we became part of a really wonderful group of friends at Cambridge who shaped my year there from nights out to cramming for exams to figuring out our first real jobs and kind of steps in the real world and have been a really important part of my life ever since. This is the group you reach out to on birthdays with news of engagements, relocations, and funny memories. I feel very lucky to have a lot of wonderful memories with FWAD, and I'd like to share kind of a, a simple and small one, but one that I've thought a lot about over the years. Um, sometime in the latter half of our time at Cambridge, FWAD and I were walking together and chatting. I remember it really well. Cambridge was stupidly beautiful, and we were walking on this path passing greenery one afternoon. I was deciding between two job offers in different cities to figure out my plans after graduation and going back and forth and listing out pros and cons and decision criteria and scorings and kind of talking myself into a circle. Vlad listened really patiently and thoughtfully said, you know, people get so hung up on making the optimal decision. We are totally obsessed as human beings with the idea that there is a single best choice and that we have to make it but really there's often a handful of different but equally good choices you can pick from. Of course, I had no idea at the time that I was receiving advice on decision-making from a future Stanford PhD student specializing in judgment. But over the years, when I've made decisions big and small, I've often thought back to this conversation, not just for the soundness and simplicity of what Fouad said, but also for the care and patience with which he said it. Thinking back to this always makes me smile and feel comforted and really puts things in perspective. There are so many other great memories, our weekly Cambridge dinners with the crew, a weekend trip to London for which we trusted Fouad to choose the hostel, which was, and I've stayed at many, one of the most gnarly hostels I've ever stayed at, <laughs> to our Skype calls over the past few years from wherever Fouad was at the time. I will truly miss hearing about what Fouad is up to and what he has planned next. He lived life in a way that many of us hope to emulate with complete open-mindedness and sincerity, which has led to some incredible adventures and loved ones all over the world. He had the biggest heart of anyone I know and a thoughtfulness and intelligence that made those around him so much better. He also had a way of seeking out opportunities and making things happen. I can't say enough how much I looked up to Fouad and loved and valued him as a friend. And um, I, I can't say enough how much I'll miss him. So thank you all for being here to remember Fouad. Thank you so much, Fouad. Next we'll hear from, from Chuni. So it's, it's been a hard time. I, I really had no clue what to, what to write or to say, but over the past one week or so, I've lost count of days, kind, kind of. I, I tried to recall our memories and gathered them up and wrote a letter to him. So I'll just, I'll just read that out. What? It was a coincidence that we met. In Cambridge, you were neither enrolled in my program nor a member of my college. Yet, you found your room in my college hostel a couple of doors away from mine. And we together were part of hundreds of memories. We, used to, we, used, we gave each other a name. I used to call him Mustache. Some of, some of the people in here will know why. And, uh, he used to call me boss. He used to call me boss like that. He'd, he'd listen to me like no matter what I say. So he promised that he would always listen to boss. I wonder if you will come back if I ask you to. I wonder how the hot sauce bottles are doing without you. Also those almond milk bottles and your, and your gym shoes. I would always remember your effort on the exercises given by my sleep therapist, starting from walking in the hallway at Alston at night, to sitting in the kitchen for hours. Those were some of, some of the tasks we were given. I had sleep issues and the therapist said that 
it's because of my scaredness of being alone. So if someone makes you feel that they're around but not within your room, will that make you sleep? So he would he would walk in the whole hallway. He would, he would stay in the kitchen to make me feel that he's around and then if I could sleep. Our planning and practice sessions to scare Shamik. I still wonder how you made me fit in a small kitchen cabinet that Shamik used. We used to dine together within our friends group for dinner. It was very common. But you would even call me for lunch. Cook with that oil spray. That wasn't that wasn't real oil. That was not oil, but that was a spray. And then he would share a meal. You knew I, I can never eat alone. Our adventures together. There is a list of things which I did for the first time. And I did them with you. Walking through the jungle by the Cam River under the moon. Tasting different hot sauces. I would, I would never know Siriracha being from Bangladesh if it was not for him. Running around Alston behind nearly naked Ricardo. And then my first night out, I, I never saw life in that way. But even at that time when I guess, I guess many people wouldn't, but still at 3 a.m. he would look for all his friends. He'll remember the list, he'll, he'll ask who's where, if everyone is safe. <laughs> and many more, many more. There is a list of things. I do not know if I would ever find a friend around this globe who would fly all the way to Bangladesh to visit me. Your crazy attempt to impress your fan followers at the local market by eating three ghost peppers at one shot. That was, a, it was so crazy. He became so sick. I was so mad at him. I used to so scold him. Even that day when I was looking through that video, I scolded him so much. I always used to tell him that you are a mama's boy. You should never be without your mom. You just should always be be with her, you do crazy stuff. You were stupid enough to jump down into the Turag River from a high bridge. The whole tour, you kept me nervous and tense by all those activities of yours. For. I hate you. <laughs> you had a lot of collections from Bangladesh, and while you had them at every corner of your home, you sent me a photo mentioning, I miss you, but now I have a bit of you everywhere in my house. I wish I could tell the same, but my heart is full of your memories, your good gestures, and you're full of light smiles. I love you, Mustache. Your presence was full of life, and now your absence makes me realize how special and precious you are for me. How you always make me feel special and strong. How you always praise others. You have a big heart mustache. You always make others feel very big of themselves. Whoever is around you will feel like the king of the world. It was in the first week of April that you told me that the hecticness of your PhD work has gone down a bit and you were coming to visit me in the summer. A summer that will never come for me ever. I was never in a hurry to see you because I believed you were just a couple of hours drive away from me. And we'll make plans anytime. Now I know I should have hurried. You always pushed me for a marathon. I planned and then moved back. But believe me, Mustache, it was always in my bucket, bucket list. I always believed I would at least once join you for a marathon. I never thought we were running out of time. The marathon of your life might be short in time, but you covered a long way. You traveled around the world, we you know. You touched so many hearts, and not only you touched them, you touched them so deep. You helped everyone who came along your way. You were the cause of laughter for everyone around you. You ran very well, Mustache. You worked so hard with my therapist for months on my sleep schedule. I still cannot sleep at night. Now I guess I'll never be able to sleep at night ever. But you sleep tight, what? You sleep tight. A tight and everlasting hug. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Jenny. We have Carla will say a few words next. Yeah. Yeah. Good uh, afternoon to everyone. My name is Carla. I'm from Peru, from Cusco. And um, so I have I have uh, wrote a letter for FUAT um, because English is not my native language. So, uh, um, dear FUAT, I cannot accept that you are not longer here. I find it hard to believe that I lost you. I'm still hoping to read a message from you. You were just gorgeous, always laughing. I remember those days in Cusco, as it would be yesterday. You always told me the love you felt for your family. I remember you told me once that we should see people not for what they have or what they show. We need to see people because of their essence and souls. I will always be grateful for everything you did for me and for others. You told me how much you love helping others. You helped me so much. You motivated me to travel. I never thought I would have, I would, I, I never thought I would have met someone special like you in my life. I remember that once you told me that nothing in life is coincidence. Now I understand what you tried to say. I will never forget those days in Cusco. Those days were the best. You promised me to come back to visit Machu Picchu. And I know that this, would not, this will not be possible. You were so excited for your research that you were doing in the university for your PhD. I'm missing you so much, Fu. You were love, you were lot, you were peace, you were motivation for others. Thanks for being always there. As I sleep, I know that you are through my mind. I close my eyes as soon you are there. Thanks for, for your friendship, dear fool. I will never forget. Thanks. Thank you so much, Carla. Next, we'll hear from Ryan. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you all here. Uh, Fuad was a, an on-time kind of guy. I am not. So I uh, am doing my best to keep this to five, but it's going to be about six minutes. So over the 12 years I've been teaching, I've taught about 800 undergraduates. And of those 800, I've only become friends with one, Fuad. And sure, I've kept in touch with students or done some mentoring or written some rec letters, but Fuad is the only one I truly developed a friendship with, someone whose back I had and who had my back, whom I hung out with on two continents. In short, a bro. And I was just thinking about why this is, you know. Among those 800 students have been some very bright young people, some wonderful people, but there were qualities that made Fuad different. Things I saw when we met back in 2012 when I was still in grad school at Berkeley and was Fuad's teaching assistant. The first was his intellect. Undergrads are just learning how to think analytically, how to take apart a problem, how to be original. And that can sort of stand in the way of the kind of dialogue that you want to have with a friend because you're not engaging with them as equals. But Fuad was this strange, kind of fully formed, brilliant academic mind, even as a senior in college. It wasn't just that he got the A plus, it was that when I read his work and discussed it with him over the many lunches we'd go on to have, I felt as though I was engaging with a colleague. 
He had a rare gift of intellectual confidence. He didn't get flustered in the face of new concepts or information, but he absorbed them and produced unique new ideas of his own without anxiety or arrogance. He was a wise thinker, even at age 22. At the same time, he was ambitious. He wanted to be the best, not to beat out anyone else, but to prove something to himself. For three years, he was dead set on finding a job at a fancy name brand consulting firm. And kept getting to final round interviews, but it didn't pan out. And I said, look, Fuad, it's going to work out in consulting or something else. You know, you're one of the best students I've ever had. And he looked at me and said, hey, I thought you said I was the best student you ever had. And he said it to me with that smile of his, that big grin that you all know, the one that would just break open out of nowhere, that was warm and handsome and just a, a little bit goofy. And I, I replied, you know, you're right. I did say that. And you are the best student I ever had. And of course, it did work out for Fuad. He ended up working at a prominent policy think tank in Malaysia, doing things far more important that they do at those places where he originally wanted to work. He advised cabinet officials on how to improve internet access and public housing for millions of people. He devised new educational opportunities for children. He shaped the trajectory of an entire country in positive ways. So whenever I'd have bright, anxious students come to me and say, hey, Professor Calder, how do I find a job? What do I do with my life? I'd say, I know just the person you need to talk to. And he'd always make time for me. Now, I want to say something, too, about the kind of intellectual contribution that our brilliant, ambitious friend is making to the world. And in advance, apologies to Jen Park and to other experts in this field. I'm not an expert in the field. But Fouad had been interested ever since Berkeley in judgment and decision making and was studying that at Stanford, of course. In classical economic theory, every, every person has what economists call a utility function, sort of a rank ordering of preferences to tell us how much that person will give up to get something. You like chocolate ice cream better than vanilla? Well, then maybe you'll pay five bucks for chocolate and only four bucks for a pint of vanilla, right? But Fouad and his colleagues and interlocutors wanted to push the boundaries of this paradigm. For example, when we were in touch a few months ago, he explained that in certain situations, people will pay more for a shiny new short dictionary than a used long dictionary, even though the used long dictionary would be more useful. Now, you may say, well, who cares? Because no one buys dictionaries anymore, right? They're all online. But of course, what Fouad was really exploring was fundamental questions of human nature, of why we opt for some things over others in different situations. He was interested in how much people would be willing to give up in order to reduce carbon emissions and climate change, for example, and how we can frame the associated sacrifices to make them palatable to people. So in sum, Fouad was doing research that was gonna help address humanity's most pressing problems. Finally though, beyond the brilliant and ambitious mind, what I think we all cherish the most about Fouad was his generosity. In fact, the word generosity in English, I think doesn't do it justice. I know there are some Arabic speakers here and, and there's an Arabic word, karam, that captures it better. It's sort of a magnanimity and openness and endless kindness, a boundless liberality. And I don't just mean, as you all know, that Fuad was boundlessly liberal with hot sauce, although there was that. This is the only guy I knew who would ask for hot sauce as soon as we sat down in the restaurant before we even ordered. You know, he kind of flags the waiter and says, excuse me, do you have any hot sauce? And I'm like, Fuad, we're just here for dessert, you know, but I'm going to miss all that about him, of course, as you all will. But really what I'm talking about is a generosity, a liberality of spirit. When I arrived in Malaysia in 2016 to do research, we were living about a block from each other in these high rises. And I hadn't gotten a SIM card for my phone yet, so I couldn't call anyone in Malaysia. And he said, here, take one of mine. I have two. And I did. And then only later, you know, because we hung out many times after that, it, later I found out that his other phone had actually gotten stolen out of his gym shorts. So in fact, the only SIM card he had had was the one he lent me. And I said, man, you're too generous. You sacrificed too much. What are you doing? And he said, oh, it's okay. You know, I just used email for a couple of days with that big, handsome, you know, slightly goofy smile of his. But of course, it wasn't just generosity with material things, right? I mean, we all know how generous he was with his time, volunteering with kids, cooking for everyone at a big dinner, listening to his friends' problems, including me, late into the night, and his generosity of spirit. You know, as, as others have, have said, I, I've never met someone who gave so much praise to other people, and yet from whom the praise always felt genuine. He saw the best in his friends, and he let them know it, and too few of us do that. So to close, you know, after I found out that we'd lost Fuad, I went to the park with my one-year-old daughter, Cleo. I was lying in the grass and staring up at the sky and thinking about Fuad being up there putting hot sauce on everything in heaven. And my daughter came over and put her head on my shoulder. She 
she knew I needed a hug. And I told her that I wanted to be like Vlad, brilliant and ambitious and generous of spirit. His generosity, his karam, didn't just touch us individually. It was an engine of generosity. So when I was around him, I became a better person. And I know you did too. It connected people around the world. It was that powerful. So now we have this universe of people who love Vlad and miss him and wish they could be even a little more like him. Even their kids, they wish they could be more like him. So I'm just here to say that any friend or family member of Vlad is a friend of mine. If you come through Baltimore, say hello, come over for dinner, and we'll remember Fuad together. Thank you. I miss you, Fuad. Thank you so much, Ryan. You will have 74 people from this call visiting you in Baltimore. Next, we have Olive. Is, is Pulov here? I think, Pulov, if you are here, then we can't hear you or see you. But if you are here, we will we'll move on to, to Lisan. And Pulov, if you are here, please message and we will make sure you still are able to speak. Lisan, are you, are you here? Are you able to, would you like to speak now? Yeah. Um, so, hi, my name is Lizanne and I'm from Malaysia. So, I've um, asked Raja if I could say a few words tonight um, because I think it's, it's something that I would love to remember um, for what and I would love all of you to, to also remember him by. I didn't prepare any script or write any letters, so I'm just going to share from my heart. Uh, I think when I found out two Sundays ago, I didn't expect to cry or grieve, but I guess because I, I, the reason why I didn't think that I would, I mean, I wanted to speak, but I didn't, I didn't think if it would be right because I'm probably the one who know Fuad the least because I've only met him three times when he was in Malaysia. And I don't really know him that well. So when I was grieving, I think some of my friends were like, are you close to this friend of yours? And I said, actually, no. But I guess, I think the heart remembers because I think from what I hear from some of your sharing, you know, the stories that I, I read from Fuad's Facebook, it's that um, it's, I, I've, I've realized and learned that it's not how close you are to somebody nor how um, long you know a person, but it's really the kind of impact that the person leaves in your life. So in that first meeting itself, it was the potluck in KL. Like you mentioned that he loves food, he loves to cook. So what, how we met was I went on meetup, never was on this ad before, totally new. And that weekend I was just thinking, I want to do something different. So I found this, this group and my first thought is, it's kind of dangerous to go to a stranger's house. And then I, he was the host, so I texted him and I'm like, hi, I just want to check if, yeah, is it safe? <laughs> because I don't know, it's not as common for 
I don't, at least to me in Malaysia, it's not as common to open up your, your house to host people and to host strangers. So this was the potluck party that he, he hosted in his house. And through that, um, just text messages, I felt, hey, this, this guy seems quite genuine and quite nice because the next question I asked him was, first of all, isn't it dangerous for me to go to your house? And second, isn't it more dangerous for you to open your house to everybody else that you don't even know? And his reply was, it's fine, I've done it. I've done this like quite a few times and you know, it's, it's all good. And I'm like, okay. So I was actually really nervous. But when I went there, like he loves to cook. He had recipe books all over his, you know, his home and, you know, with different, different people from different parts of the world. I mean, who were expats in Malaysia, people came with different dishes. I mean, he even told me like, even if you don't bring a dish, it's fine. Just come. There's always more than enough food. So generosity. I mean, he was kind, he was genuine. He was just really warm and friendly. And I think that, being so nervous going to a stranger's house that night, I think some of us stayed back and like we played games and we talked until like 3.30 in the morning. So that first meeting left a really, really deep impression in me. And the last, I mean, the, the last time, which is the third time I met him was at Stella's farewell. And Stella is here tonight in this, this call. So in between, yes, we kept in touch through messages. And I mean, like I said, the, the mind doesn't remember, but the heart does, because when I look back at the messages, there were so many times that we kind of planned to want to catch up, to meet, but it didn't happen. Um, and even through my conversations with him, he has always mentioned his mom, like his mom is in town, you know, he's busy with his mom. And yeah, so we didn't actually get to meet up. So I think when, when I found out about this is, I grieve, um, the loss of a friend. I grieve the loss of the opportunity to, to meet him again, to get to know him. I wish I got to know him better, but just that, that little bit that I know of him, he has left a really, really like deep um, impact in my life. And I remember him very, very fondly, even though I may not know him that well. So, yeah, I think that's, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. I think everybody will agree that Fuad was the type of person you could meet for five minutes and he would make you feel that you've known him and he's known you for his whole life. That's the type of person Fuad was. Just before we move to Cole, just another chance if, if Bulov is here, if she's able to say a thing if she is here. Otherwise we will we will hear from Cole. Hey everybody. <laughs> Excuse me. Um I don't have anything prepared today. Um in fact I just reached out and requested that I um have the ability to speak just last night. Um I first want to thank the, the people who have organized this. I was uh, really happy to, to see that we could all uh, celebrate Fuad together. Um, and I see a lot of uh, familiar faces. It's, it's good to see all you guys that I met in, uh, in the UK on that, that trip in 2014. Um, He was just an amazing person. Um, I feel a really big loss, obviously. He was a big part of my life. Um, he was, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, struggling to speak here, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll do the best I can. Uh, on, that, on that trip, he was basically our atlas. He had planned everything down to almost the hour. In every single location, he was um, basically guiding us from one thing to the next. I mean, if it wasn't for him, we'd, you know, we'd have done a quarter of the things that we were able to actually do. Um, and 
not only that trip was he an atlas he was he was an atlas for my life i really looked up to him um not only academically but on a personal level he was easily the coolest friend i have uh sorry nick and rick and chris all you guys that are out there it's true um people like him are rare i don't have too many close friends and uh You know, it's people like Fuad just don't come around every day, and uh, it's it's you know it's it's difficult. I just uh, like Nick. I want to be more like him. I'm um, I'm trying to be more compassionate and and be kinder to people like he was, and and just aspire to be great. And you know, I. I look up to him still. I still hear him talking to me and, 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 you know, helping me through. Uh, and, uh, I guess I just want to say thank you to Fuad for, for being such a good friend to me. And, uh, and yeah, that's all I have to say. Thanks for listening guys. Thank you so much, Cole. Uh, David Beale has also requested to speak if if he's here and he's if he's still available. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. I am one of those people that did not know Fuad for very long. Um I really loved what Lizanne said about the heart remembering. It's not a matter of how well or how long you know a person, but the impact of that friendship. Um, I was one of seven people in my family who planned for a long time to climb Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, Africa. And um, I was going to celebrate my 60th birthday. And as we were preparing the night before to begin our climb, there were two people, friends from Cambridge, who, who we met. And I see that one of them is here, Georgia, was one of those and Fuad was the other. And uh, we thought it was a bit of a gamble, our family, to take on two others because we're kind of strange in our own ways, but we took a chance and uh, <laughs> so grateful that we did because um, for a week, beginning September 1st, 2014, we had a wonderful time. And uh, Fouad was such an important part of that venture for us, of that adventure. And um, he just paid such close attention to all of us. I was kind of the average age, or I guess we would have two tiers of age. We had my son, who was 30 years old at the time, and uh, his generation of age, and then a group of us who were age 60 and around that age. And... Um, Fuad was so attentive to all of us. He called all of us uncle and aunt. And as we have kept loose contact with each, with each other over the years since, he continues to call us Uncle David, Uncle Brian, Aunt Jolyn, and um, is just so endearing. He was um, extremely supportive of all of us. He didn't um, pay the extra money to have a porter carry his very heavy backpack. The rest of us did, and then just had lightweight day packs to take us from day to day in our hiking. But it wasn't enough that Fuad would carry his enormous pack all day long, regardless of the terrain. 
but that he would watch us. And when he saw that we were struggling a bit, he would take our backpacks from us as well. Just uh, that generosity of spirit that has been spoken of um, meant so much to all of us. We had a marvelous time together and summited and it was triumphant and marvelous. I happened to have some difficulty at the summit and needed some help to go back downhill to where there was more oxygen and such. And he was right there, right there helping and encouraging me and everyone. Anyway, I could go on and on about that single week that I experienced life with him, but I'm sure my five minutes is up. But uh, God bless our dear Fuad. He means so much to all of us. Thank you so much, David. The, the, the final speak will be from Melody, Fuad's cousin. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, Melody. Okay, great. Um, kind of like what Nick said, I, I grew up with Fawad. Um, our moms are sisters, but they're more than sisters. They're best friends. Um, I saw a side of Fawad that I feel like not a lot of people know. Um, anytime we'd get together, we knew we would, Fawad would be the one that would make us laugh the whole time we were together. Um, he would always just bring the whole family in like such a great mood. Um, as we got older, we knew that we would get into trouble when Fawad and his sister Layla were around and that our moms and dads would be mad at us for all the shenanigans we would get into as cousins and causing problems. <laughs> Um, but as we grew older, I saw a profound and eloquent side of Fawad that I could have never imagined. Um, just seeing and having real life conversations with him and philosophical conversations and conversations that changed my perspective of the world um, and really changed my life altogether. Um, You, you really sometimes take for granted how much of an impact someone has had on you and then when something tragic like this happens there's just all these memories that are like flooding me of when we were kids and conversations that I had with him and poker games with the family and I just think we're all um, fortunate and blessed to have known him and having this many people on this chat today is just a testament to how amazing and what an impact he's had on all of us. And the best thing we can do is just continue telling everyone stories about him and keeping his memory. That's all. Thank you so much, Melody. And thank you to, to Nick, to Fuad's mom, to Jen, Visha, Chuni, Carla, Ryan, Lisan, Cole, David, for some truly heartwarming words. I have a collection of memories that people have shared with me. Either they were unable to speak or they weren't able to join the call. I will now read them out if you please allow me. Firstly, Fuad's friend Stella has shared the following text messages that Fuad has sent her. Fuad was supporting her through her master's application in his own time. And these text messages really do show what type of person Fuad was. Hey, when are these due? I asked because I'm going to China tomorrow for 10 days, so wanted to know if I could make edits during my trip or after. Tomorrow I can do some, and then over the trip, I will have relaxed days, I may be able to help as well. We'll make your CV and personal statement killer. Let's work on these letters together so you can get into the university that you prefer. We'll get you in somewhere good. Hey Stella, how are you? How are the apps coming along? I can probably help out this weekend if you want. 
You'll be fine, no matter what. Don't worry, Stella. Your writing is amazing. You are highly intelligent, and I never expected such brilliant things. Don't worry too much. You will get into your favourite school. I was accepted by Stanford Business School, so will 99% go in there after talking to my professors. Stanford is the best, and it's right next to my mom. I luckily got in. A humble, brilliant, caring person I'm so grateful to have crossed paths with. Rest in peace, Fuad. From his friend Brian, who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with Fuad and also with David. Some of these memories are overlapping with David, so I'm sure Brian will, will, uh, will laugh with you together about some of the memories. I was so sorry to hear of the passing of Fuad. He was an incredible person and will be greatly missed. I met Fuad in Tanzania in 2014 when a group of seven family members were climbing Kilimanjaro. We were asked if our group of seven would be willing to add a couple of students into our team and have them with us for the next week. We were pretty hesitant at first and we did not know who these kids were and who we were adding. We decided to take a chance and say yes. That is when we met Fuad and Georgia, both great people. It was an incredibly chance meeting with two incredible people. Fuad and Georgia meshed into our group and our families straight away. My nephews were calling me Uncle Brian, so Fuad called me Uncle Brian. He called all four of us older generation uncle and aunt. He treated us with respect and consideration. It was easy, easy to tell he was raised right. He asked me a ton of questions and listened to my endless stories of hiking and climbing. He told us about his amazing life, his travels, and his wonderful mother and wonderful family. On the trail, you have lots and lots of hours of hiking. And so we talked politics, religion, education, and adventure. Fuad had such a love for life and adventure that he was infectious. He was interested in everything. He had such a great smile and was always happy. He was by far the toughest climber of our group and often asked anyone struggling if he could carry their pack, even snagging it while they were not looking and taking up the trail with a second pack on his back. As we climbed Kilimanjaro, Fuad could have climbed much faster but he stayed with the group all the way, assisting and encouraging every person as the going really got tough. I know Fuad dreamed and even planned on going to Everest someday. The trip down and departure all happened too quickly and Fuad was gone from us just like that. That trip and climb was a magical time for us. We have stayed in touch over the years and had lots of hope to get back together for another, another adventure. All seven of us in the Flake family, and even our loved one at homes that got to know Fuad through our Kilimanjaro stories, will never forget this incredible young man who happened into our lives for one amazing week and left such a lasting impression. I have to think that it was not just chance, chance that we linked up with Fuad, and I also believe that one day we will be re reunited with Fuad and enjoy the feeling of love and friendship that we had in life. Fuad, will forever live in our memories and hearts. Brian Flake. From our leading professor at the University of Cambridge, Dr. Allegra. I am incredibly saddened by Fuad's passing. He was a kind soul and a true gentleman with a formidable intellect and an insatiable thirst for knowledge and learning. I remember that he was taking Mandarin classes at the University of Cambridge Language Centre on top of the MPhil management lectures and coursework. Hearing that after successfully working for the Malaysia Blue Ocean Strategy Institute in Kuala Lumpur for a couple of years, he'd become a PhD candidate was no surprise to me. My heart goes out to Fuad's parents and family and to his friends, classmates and colleagues. His memory lives on. Deep condolences, Dr. Allegra. From his friend, Jasmine Johnson in Malaysia. Dear Fuad, gosh, I'll always wish I had spent more time keeping in touch with you and meeting you in person. I remember you as a wonderful, kind and helpful person. Thank you for everything you did for Malaysia 
and Malaysians. Thank you for choosing us. We are so lucky and proud to have you have, have to have had you with us for a while. I will certainly remember the happy exchanges we shared in Bangsa. Salamat Jalan, my friend. Go safely to a better world. Your warmth, kindness, openness and positivity will stay with us forever. From his friend Shamik Patel. Fuad was a truly terrific chap. Always smiling, super positive, incredibly resourceful and helpful to all those around him, irrespective of the time of day or place. He loved his family and his family loved him dearly, as a number of us have experienced firsthand. We met Cambridge in 2013. Early on, Fuad and I became friends as he moved into Queen's College residence under my guide. Little did I realise at the time, we would spend so much quality time with each other and build amazing friends with whom we live, cook, share thoughts, exercise, play music and learn from every day. Memories we'd be fond of, irrespective of time. As days passed, Fuad and I were part of another important circle at the university, the crew, whom he loved and they admired him just as much. All his classmates got on with him, and I have no doubt, given Fuad's academic prowess, that he was a teacher's favourite. Fuad, you left us way too early, and this is regrettable, given your unprecedented and relentless attitude to life. You'll be missed, Professor. From his friend, Hamza Virji. One of my fondest memories with Fuad is when, quite unexpectedly, we met up for an evening in Kuala Lumpur while I was there for just a few days for work. I hadn't seen Fuad for a long time and didn't know what to expect. Two things struck me. The first is how much he had integrated with the local culture and how at home he felt. For me, this shows how great Fuad was at connecting with people, taking a genuine interest in their background, their motivations, their dreams and their talents. The second is I realised we had true friendship, which is not about being inseparable. It's about being separated and nothing changes. Fuad, wherever you are, I want you to know that you are in my prayers and continue to live in our hearts. That will never change. From his dear friend, Dennis Derici. By way of introduction, my name is Dennis one of Fuad's friends from Cambridge. Without taking too much of the attendee's time, I want to share with you briefly how thankful I am for the way he touched my life. Thanks to him, we formed lifelong friendships, most of whom are with us here today. During the first weeks of school, he came up with this quite unorthodox yet brilliant idea to meet and bond with other students in our class. He said, why don't we invite one new person from our class at a time to our formal dinners so that we can interview them and see if they're cool enough to hang out with us. While it started as a joke, all of his recruits are here with us today. With a healthy mix of competition and camaraderie, he has always been the one pushing me further. Thank you for lifting my mood by challenging me for a dance off in the most inappropriate times such as rehearsing for the final presentation in the lecture hall. Thank you for being my consulting interview prep buddy and organizing classes for our class to land a job. I am still carrying all the things I learned from you today in my day-to-day -day job. Thank you for convincing someone like me who finds even walking boring to run a 10K in Scotland. My fellow dancing, case coaching, running partner, while I am still finding it hard to process that you are not with us. Your legacy will be with me and your loved ones forever. I love you, brother. And final memory from his professor at the University of Cambridge, Dr. Jochen Menges, who has shared some words directly from a reflective essay that Fuad wrote at his time in Cambridge. Fuad was an incredibly talented, warm-hearted and forward-looking student. He stood out in his class as a leader, and I always believed that Fuad's prospects were high. I am devastated that his life has come to such a sudden end. It is a loss that will be forever felt in our hearts. 
When learning about Fuad's passing, I turned back to an essay he wrote as part of the management consulting project at Cambridge Judge Business School. I was the lecturer teaching the course and I had set up the course to involve projects with external companies as clients. Fuad soon took charge of his project and became the person in his team to handle the interaction with the client. But despite all his remarkable efforts, the project did not go as well as we had hoped, in part because of availability issues with the client. In his essay, Fuad reflected on his experience with the project. One section stood out to me because it so utterly resonated with my very feelings as I was trying to come to terms with Fuad's passing. He wrote, The most valuable lesson I learned from this project is that life is not always fair and that I must learn how to be okay with that. Fuad's passing struck me as entirely unfair, thinking of all he would have still had ahead of him. Well, should I perhaps take his own advice and try to be okay with it? Try to accept what happened? As I read on the essay, I found Fuad to conclude. Outcomes can sometimes be arbitrary and unlucky. Similarly, however, outcomes can be lucky. Dwelling on the unlucky and convincing myself that the world is conspiring against me will only make me more miserable. I found solace in these words, realizing that even though we now feel deeply hurt, confused, and upset about the turn his life and our lives so suddenly took, dwelling on this loss will only extend our feelings of despair and misery that Fuad would not want us to have. I'm sure you all are. I am unable to follow Fuad's advice for now, but I am conscious that one day we will need to do as Fuad suggested himself. I'll take from this experience, I'll put it behind me, and I'll look forward to what is ahead. Thank you, Fuad. You will be remembered forever in my heart at Cambridge and by all the ones whose life you so kindly and wisely touched. Thank you for everyone to for joining us here today and for sharing some fantastic memories and truly heartwarming words. The words written by Fuad in his Cambridge University essay elegantly sum up his life and his approach to life. The words we can hear him saying to us right now. The message that he would say to us if he was here right now. Thank you to everyone who has spoken or shared a message and thank you to you all for joining us today. Before we open the service to wider conversation, I please remind you of a few things. Firstly, if you have not shared a memory and still wish to do so, please either write this on Fuad's Facebook page or send it to me and I will do on your behalf. Secondly, please visit the Fuad Shanib website in the next few days for the link to this recorded virtual memorial service. I know this service has been long, so please feel free to say your final goodbye and leave should you need. But for now, I would like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for joining us today to celebrate Fuad's life. Fuad will be proud of us to see us healing with his memories. Fuad, my friend, I will always remember you. I will always love you. I will always miss you. Thank you so much to everybody. And thank you to Fuad. Roger. Can you hear me, Roger? Hi, I can hear you. Thank you for doing this again. And I want to just say a little bit. Um, Ford always referred to his Bay Area brothers. Nick, Chris, Ricky, and Cole. You know you were his brothers. Sash too. Um, Tony, thank you for your Sweetheart. friendship to Fouad. Please leave your messages on Fouad's Facebook. 
I couldn't bring myself to go on his Facebook. Until yesterday, I forced myself to, to go there and read the stories. And I was astonished <laughs> how it brought me they can't hear her. some peace. It brought me some comfort to read all your memories. <laughs> Thank you so much for putting those stories about my beautiful son. He was the most beautiful soul. Please put more memories, put more stories as it brings me comfort, brings us comfort. It really does. Thank you, everyone. You had an impact on Fuad's life. He really did. He talked about all of you to me with fondness. Thank you. I want to say thank you to all of you. That's all. If anybody would like to talk and hasn't so far, please feel free to unmute and and say a few words if you wish. Uh, hi everyone, my name's Danny. I met Fuad when I moved back um, with my father when I was about 18 and we went to Berkeley together. And um, he, he was like Nick said, whenever I made a mistake, he was the person I would call and he would make me feel better about any situation that was going on. And when I didn't think I was going to get accepted to Berkeley, he kept telling me that I was going to and that I was smart enough and that I should believe in myself that I could do that. And um, when you were talking about his dances, I keep remembering with his beanie, with his ears, and he would do this one dance, and it was a very specific dance, and Nick and Cole know what I'm talking about. And it was like this glide dance that he would do. Um, <laughs> and it was the best. And the, the best memory that I have, I'm sorry, of Fui is when we graduated Berkeley, and Berkeley was, they read the wrong names when we walked across the stage and I got really upset and I couldn't find my sister. So Fui waited for me to get off stage and I was crying and he gave me a hug and he held my hand until my sisters came down to find me because he knew how important that day was to me. And he gave me a huge hug and told me how proud of me that he was. And, um, he was such a good man and um i'm so honored to have known him and i miss him dearly and um it's amazing that everyone is here right now and um i feel so lucky to have known him and uh i miss him so thanks everyone I just want to say one more thing. Um, it's hard for me to want to tell fun stories and stuff right now. I have a lot of them and I'm sure you all have a few yourself. And um, to Fui's mom's point, like we should all make sure we get all this stuff on that website and uh, where we can all see it forever, you know? I have a lot of pictures that you guys are going to love and I haven't had the strength, I guess, to post them yet. This stuff's really hard, but, but I will post them and I hope you guys do too. You bought me a snowboard for my 21st birthday. 
brand new snowboard. I, what 21 year old? We hadn't even gone to Berkeley yet. He spent all that money on me. <laughs> anyway, I'm probably gonna drop soon, but uh, I love you guys. I hope I hope this brings us all closer as uh, a connected Fooey family. You know, drop a line, keep up with each other. His mom's pretty cool. So I plan to be friends with her either way. But shoot me a line. All right. Love you guys. Thank you, Nick, and thank you to everyone. I know that it's it's very late in some parts of the world and very early in other parts of the world. So if anybody has any final remarks, please feel free. Otherwise, please do follow from Fuad's mom and Nick and everybody else. And let's share the memories on, on Facebook. And, and let's keep reminding ourselves of the brilliant lessons he taught us. Raja, I might say one thing. Um, for, for those familiar with the Muslim faith, we have this this, this expression. I will, I'll say it in a terrible accent. I'm very sorry. Uh, it goes inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. And I find solace in in thinking, remembering that he, he he's returned to to God. He's he's gone to a better place, and he's in a place of peace. And that's that's the main thing too to remember in this time. Hi, I'm Charlotte. Um, I'm from Malaysia. Uh, I'm now in the UK and I thought I should, I didn't want to share anything in the beginning because um, we were quite close friends. I was always behind the scenes, you know, I've heard so many stories of all of you, but most of you probably didn't know me. I've heard stories from Tuni. I don't know your name as Kazi, but I know your name as Tuni. And you know, to hear you share all those things that you had, and it's all the things that he has shared with me before. And Visha, you don't know me, but I know you went punting with Fuad, you know? Um, it's a very strange situation. Um, I've spoken with Nick on the phone before. Um, I've almost met Chris when he was in Malaysia. I've met his mom many times. She's so lovely. I would like to see her again. Um, his dad, he visited Malaysia and so I was so excited, you know, when you were there to visit him and he showed you around um, where to eat and his apartment and he was so proud of what he had accomplished. Um, I don't know what to say really, but I just wanted to, you know, to let the friends know that he's left behind about how he's really appreciated all of you, um, that he even shared it all with me and that story, David, that you shared um, about him um, in Tanzania, he had also shared that story with me and it just felt so personal to hear all of them and to hear, you know, to have all of you come together today. And it's just as though all his stories about you, the past two years that he had told me, um, not the past two years, the two years that he was in Malaysia, um, to just see it all come at, at this point, you know, at this juncture. Um, I just wanted to, let you all know that because I just thought it would be important for you to know, you know, how much you all meant to him, um, that he would tell me these stories. Um, the wedding, was it Hamza's wedding? I can't remember, the one in the UK or something. Um, you know, all these things are just started, com started coming back to me and I just thought that you should know that he really appreciated every one of you that, you know, he would tell me all these little silly stories, um, even growing up with um, Cole um, and Chris. I don't know. 
I just don't know what to say really, but he really loved every one of you. Ryan, I remember something about the SIM card. Um, I remember him mentioning that you were visiting Malaysia and he was so excited, you know, that someone from his university is in Malaysia. Um, he just had the biggest heart, really. He's just so full of life. Um, but I guess, you know, he just really lived it. The Mexican, I mean, like 70 over people in a Zoom call. How many of us can get that, really? Uh, that's all I wanted to say, that he really loved every single one of you. Um, Stella Gunawan, always helping you with your, your masters. I know he was always very concerned. Um, he wanted to write recommendation letters for you even, so that you could get into the university that you wanted to get uh, in. Uh, yeah, and his mom, um, I have no words for you. I know how much you loved him. I have not seen any parent love their son that much. And that just really breaks me. And I would like to see you again sometime. Um, just to really appreciate what and the life he had given me. I was in a very bad time when I met Fuad. Um, I had gone for his meetup, his potluck, and because of that, I think it just totally turned my life around. He showed me how much better my life could be. He always preached me to be better, to be more positive. Um, through his meetup, I made so many good friends, um, like Stella Gunawan, Stella Gunawan, who's here today. Um, through him, I met Kelly, and through Kelly, I met my now husband, um, and I'm now settled in the UK. You know, he really just did so many things that changed my life around. And I can't be more grateful to this life, really. So I just want to leave you with that. If you'd like to contact me to share memories of him, because I feel like I know so many of you through his stories. But you just never knew me. It's very strange. Um, feel free to reach out. I'm on Facebook. Um, and I think I'll part with that, that he really loved all of you with all of his heart. Thank you, Charlotte. I know Fuad's father would like to say a few words. Uh, this is uh, Adnan Shanib, um, Mustache Senior. Maybe just explain what Kazi was saying about Mustache, to clarify it. Um, I think she was referring to the family name Shanib means a little bit like mustache uh, from the word in Arabic. Um, this is very surreal time, epic time um, for all of us. Um, global lockdown, a major epidemic and here we are today having a virtual memorial of our beloved Fuad. I want to thank all of you for, um, for being here today. And um, maybe share a few um, few things about Fuad um, that you may not know about. Um, life has um, really takes all of us to unpredictable twist and turn. If there's any lesson from Fuad's life and Fuad's departure. Uh, when Fuad was about 19 years old, 
he was um, just finishing his junior college. And to be honest with you, we didn't really have much expectation from Fuad. And I asked him, what are you going to be doing with your life? And he said, dad, I have it all figured out. I'm going to um, study to be a chef. And I didn't want to tell him what's going on in my mind. I wanted to tell him, are you going out of your mind? Um, and I knew if I told him, no, you can't do that, uh, that would be his career choice. So I took a different strategy. I said, why don't you go and get a job as a, a chef or, a, or as an assistant chef? And then let's talk a few weeks later. And he did. He went and he got a job. And three days later, I asked him, how's it going, Fouad? How do you like your job? He said, this is the worst job in the world. Um, I definitely don't want to be in this business. Uh, we work very hard, get paid very little. And um, I, I don't really like it. And I, I was relieved. And uh, then he changed his mind and he um, applied for Berkeley. Uh, little that we knew that he would actually get in Berkeley and later on go to the London School of Economics and later on go to Cambridge and then um, Stanford. Um, very strange twists and turn in in his life. Um, Fouad taught me a lot of things. Uh, we shared love of passion and love of food. Uh, I just got from the, the refrigerator here is Sriracha hot sauce. And a few other hot sauces. And I can tell you for certain, he, he got that from his grandmother. Uh, his grandmother, um, Ibtisam, who passed away two years ago, um, she cannot go to a restaurant without a small bottle of Tabasco sauce. She would carry it with her in her purse. She was very, very passionate about spicy food. Um, I, I would like to thank all of you for sincerely for being uh, part of Fouad's life. Um, you know, Fouad's mom and I are, are honored to, to know some of you, and I hope to know all of you. Uh, we are honored uh to be in the presence of such brilliant people all over the world and i'd like to really sincerely thank you for being part of part of Fouad's life and it would it would make us really really very happy in the future to just know that you're all safe you're all healthy and you're successful Please don't hesitate to drop us a line. Let us know about your accomplishment. Let us know that you got married or had a kid or climbed a high mountain or maybe win the Nobel Prize because I, I really have great confidence in, in all of you as great friends and, and the most brilliant people. So please, do us the honor of keeping us informed about the great things that you will accomplish going forward. God bless um, during this holy month of Ramadan and sincerely hope to um, know more about you and hear from you. Thank you.
I think that was, that was a nice way to to end this service. So please do share the messages on Facebook and we will share the link of this recording with everyone shortly as well. Thank you to everyone and we will uh, we will end this service now. Thank you to everybody and we will always miss you, Fuad. We will always remember you. <laughs>